me, let me start uh, just on the last, uh, the last Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, why did you choose those four variables to simulate, stim yeah, simulate and um, how did you fluctuate them based on the random variable? Absolutely. We chose the variables based off of a regression analysis. What we did is we wanted to see what stock price movements have the highest R squared in relation to, to what has actually been moving. So what we found also in discussions with management is finding out what things are they worried about. And specifically, they, they mentioned the oil price fluctuations. And so we wanted to make sure that we had that accurately measured. And so we did a re regression to see uh, over the last four and a half years, what does the stock price move when the oil price moves? As well as some of the GDP growth rates, that's a huge uh, component to our DCF. So we wanted to make sure that we factored that in. We looked at what they had done historically, whatever GDP was, and then allocated based off of regression, seeing what, what is the correlation to the stock price, and then allocated uh, a percentage and an allocation to that. Speaking of the WAC, that's another huge component. We wanted to make sure that we accounted for if interest rates change um, and, and if their uh, capital structure changes, how do we incorporate and provide sensitivity on that? And then as well, the revenue, that's going to be the largest driver, especially with the growth potential that they want. So we wanted to make sure that, that we had analysis that properly uh, demonstrated that. Um, on their company overview, they have you described about six major segments where they derive their revenues. Um, you described a bit the automakers, obviously they'll move to Mexico because um, of the labor force, which is on par with China now. Uh, you mentioned just the Japanese ones. And uh, I understand the auto, but how about the other sectors? Did you look at uh, agriculture that I see it's significant in their revenues, um, in intermodal? Um, uh, metals, uh, steel, and this is one question. The other one, your beta in the um, discount rate, 1.22, looks a bit too high when you basically have a company that uh, transports these diversified types of products. Uh, it would be more online with the market. So these are the two questions. Thanks. Sure. So when looking at the, the different revenue, specifically the agriculture that you mentioned, mm -hmm. agriculture had a severe drought last year. And so when they're comparing their comps this year to last year, they're going to be significantly higher in the, in the very high double digits. So what management told us is, you know what, although the first and second quarter are going to be incredibly high, it's going to taper off in the third and fourth quarter as those comps from last year start to increase. So they've mentioned that uh, the agriculture is just a pace where they're going to maintain consistent steady growth, but not in anything that's going to really balloon. Uh, you mentioned the steel. That's something where the infrastructure, when they start building some of these drill sites, which we believe will absolutely happen, um, that will be a huge growth. Um, but we really, really through the discussions with management, we wanted to focus on the areas that they say will separate them from the industry, where they have growth potential that others do not. I think to add on to Derek's point, uh, and specifically in the intermodal division, um, that's a commodity segment that currently Kansas City Southern only has about a 3% market share. Um, and that's been their fastest growing commodity segment in recent quarters, uh, primarily due to the network and the infrastructure that they've recently built. Um, in 2005, Kansas City Southern bought out their Mexican partner. And so they've been able to take uh, full advantage and make their own decisions on the network that they're going to be building to, to transport truck and trail across the road across the border. So that's going to continue to be a, a market share gain that uh, Kansas City Southern is going to be able to, to afford. And also another opportunity of growth for KSU with this new uh, legislation with the foreign direct investment in Mexico. We've got um, the new energy, energy reform. Oil is, production is going to, is going to uh, continue to increase there in Mexico, um, which also incorporates their frac sand. It's going to increase uh, the frac sand uh, transportation down to Mexico because it comes from North uh, United States. Another place is crude oil, um, <coughs> refined products coming out of Mexico as well. Right now, only 83% uh, of all the freight that's moved from Mexico and the U.S. is moved by truck. We do s so. 17% is moved by rail. We do see that going up. Uh, it's more cost effective than by trucks, so that's another opportunity of growth. And if I can just now get to your, your, your beta question. What we did is we looked and took the industry average. We then, re, we then unlevered that and relevered based on the capital structure that Kansas City Southern has. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, 
If I were to ask you what could be one factor or variable that would change your recommendation from a hold to a buy, uh, I mean, what is the, the upside risk in your assumptions? Absolutely. The, the biggest risk that we think that, uh, especially for me, I'm, I'm the optimist in the group, is if that legislation does not go through. Mm -hmm. Because if that legislation passes, it's going to open up the rail industry to everybody else, and all of a sudden, this huge growth in the Mexico story disappears rapidly. If that doesn't happen, and it's been delayed and delayed, and now it looks like it's actually going to come through in their September, uh, in their September vote, and there's going to be so many changes to this bill that it now actually has to re-go back through their house. So it's in the Senate now, it would have to go back to the house. So if that, if that actually gets shot down, or if it's favorable for Kansas City Southern where they can still hold that, um, that key concession, that would make this vibe because then our, our revenue projections change significantly. One of your slides showed the, uh, the multiple for Kansas City Southern being at a significant premium historically compared to the peer group. Why is that? And, and what do you understand from that? And how do you expect, how, what are your expectations of that evolving over time? Yeah, the, the multiple historically has been based on their, their ability to grow faster than the industry average. So this is a really small company and they do have the unique story in Mexico that has generated a lot of growth above the industry average, which has demanded that multiple valuation, that premium to the valuation. Um, as one thing to that, that has happened that has led to that significant growth has been the change in the balance sheet. So we have a lot of debt costs that have been extracted. And, and if so, we've grown at 21, 22% clip over the last three to five years. If we take out the earnings per share from the debt releveraging, um, we actually are only growing about 15 to 16%. And I think that's where they'll continue to be in the near future, in the 15 to 16% range, which will be in line with the industry. Um, so I don't think that they'll command such a high premium valuation to the industry average. If I, if I can just ask a follow-up question. Sure. So, so you're, the business you're looking at is defensive in some areas and quite cyclical in others as well, uh, as, as, as per your last answer. How, how, do you, how do you understand the different parts of the business and, and how do you look at the more cyclical parts of the business compared to the more defensive parts of the business and, and how should an investor regard a business like this? Right. Specifically, a lot of their portions, as you mentioned, are tied to GDP. And so a lot of the industrial goods, some of the larger components, uh, we need to be aware of and provide information to the investor and let them know that typically the, invest, uh, the business cycle is about seven to eight years. We're falling near the end of that. As you can see, there, there's incredible risks when, um, when we do hit a recession because they are so tied to that. And so what we do need to do is just make sure that we make the investor aware that this risk is incredibly inherent to Kansas City Southern, specifically because of their tying to GDP. You mentioned the, uh, the balance sheet and the debt uh, expanding quite, quite a lot recently. Um, is that a risk? Do you, do you see their balance sheet being over levered at this point? Uh, it's actually contracted quite a bit. I may have misspoke earlier. Um, they've actually reduced the amount of debt that they have, which uh, the, the decrease in the cost of debt is what's been led to the increased earnings per share. Okay, thank you. And I'd also like to add that just in last year, 2013, they have been graded up in their credit worthiness as investment grade by all three rating agencies. Thus, they were able to refinance a lot of their higher interest rate debt to, to have this uh, better balance sheet. Right, and typically they were hovering around seven to eight percent um, interest rate, and now it's actually down to about the three to four range. You, you mentioned earlier on that management was overzealous. Why, uh, and, and what is your view of management, and how do you how do you rate them in in your overall analysis? Right. Um, I'm the negative Nancy in the bunch with regards to management, specifically because there's so much information out there qualitatively that I feel as if they're ignoring. Um, they're, they're providing incredibly high projections at the Port of Lazaro, but yet the government's taking over. I can't really remember the last time a government was able to run anything efficiently. So if they're still saying, you know what, we're not really worried about, let's throw that under the table, let's keep moving forward as well with the automobile. These are new plants. New plants are going to have issues when they start up, but they said, no, 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 production's gonna be the same, 300,000 cars, we're gonna get a piece of that, no worries, no problems. Well, that hasn't happened. In their first quarter earnings, they drop 20% because all of a sudden, automobile production had issues, ramp up has slowed down, and so it's, it's a constant story in one category after another where they say, you know what, that's not really an issue, that's not really an issue. Well, 
It, it is, and it's been proven that it, ha it has affected them. Uh, I th Thank you. Thank you very much.